Well, with me now is James Rubin, who was the US Assistant Secretary of State under President Clinton. He's now a visiting scholar at Oxford University. Do you think Bill Clinton would have handled it differently? Well, I think it, the overall policy might not be that different, but the way we got there would be massively different. And I say that because uh, President Obama has finally gotten, after two and a half years of the Syria crisis, to what should have been his policy all along, diplomacy backed by force. And he got there on the very narrow issue of chemical weapons, because I think all your viewers will understand that the terrible atrocities going on in Syria, the ones like in your piece uh, uh, last week, uh, they're going to keep happening. The, the, the 100,000 people are going to keep dying. Now, maybe there won't be a chemical use. I think what Bill Clinton realized after a rough couple of years in his early two years is that when you're the United States and uh, when you're able to build a coalition, get international leadership, and you come up with a reasonable objective diplomatically, like we did in Kosovo, a reasonable plan for the Serbs and the Kosovars, and a dictator of this kind rejects it, the world is going to be on your side. And so I think President Obama kind of got there, sort of. We'll see, because I don't think his threat of force is going to be seen as very credible right now. And, and do you think he has shown weakness, an American weakness, in the process? Well, to go to Congress for this vote was uh, mind-boggling to those of us in the foreign policy business, especially when uh, the Congress has been hostile, the House of Representatives to President Obama, very hostile, embarrassed him, embarrassed the country over the debt ceiling and other subjects. And to put America's credibility, the, the credibility of the world's only superpower, in the hands of people who've behaved like that on an issue of this importance, I think was, uh, was extremely risky and mind-boggling. And I think it, it showed weakness because, in the end, it's clear the House Republicans were not going to vote for this. And if they voted no, actually voted no, I don't think the president, even if he says he has the constitutional ability, would have been able to use force. But it, it, hasn't America changed as well? I mean, the, the people seem to support what Congress has been saying. The, the people don't want to intervene. Well, that's right. Uh, America is going through a very, very uh, tough period in terms of its willingness to act abroad. I would compare it in many ways with a modern touch to what the British here in this country went through after World War I. Iraq really shocked Americans, both the incompetence of our failure on the ground inside Iraq, the fact that we were so alone in the world, the fact that uh, Abu Ghraib happened, and it really caused a recoiling by the American people of international engagement. But the result of that is the end of American leadership, isn't it? I, I don't. Th I think that's well, a the bit decline strong. at least. Certainly, there's been a decline in American leadership. You look at the various issues that have come forward. Uh, on Libya, you had this phrase "leading from behind." Essentially, in Libya, the British and the French made a decision to intervene. On Mali, the United States wasn't even prepared to give France some help when it went intervened. The Syria crisis has been going on for a very, very long time, and the United States really hasn't done anything until President Clinton's words were, were really rejected by Assad. Pulled out of Iraq needlessly after we could have had a small force there. Afghanistan, where basically the president is telling the country that it's over, we're bringing our troops but home. Vast so all of this stuff is happening, and that's a retreat. But vast numbers of people in the world will think it's a good thing. If that, America is in retreat. I, I, I think that's true, but not when they find out the reason why the United States has been called the indispensable nation is because when something terrible happens in this world, and we know it does happen, it's only really the United States that is able to galvanize people to, to, and the countries of the world to actually accomplish something good. James Rubin, on that note, thank you very much indeed.